Continuing with root locus based controller design, now we'll look at dynamic controller design. Previously, we just looked at uh, doing proportional controller. There are, there are no dynamics in the proportional controller, just a proportional constant k. Here we'll look at uh, some controllers that have uh, dynamics in them. So this is the controller configuration that I illustrated before, nothing changes. Uh, the motivation. A simple root locus based parameter selection does not alter the shape of the root locus. So it doesn't bend the root locus or anything like that. So what that means, this is also called uh, a plane proportional design, a uh, plane proportional controller design. What this means that you can only have closed loop poles that lie on the original root locus, nothing more. So if you vary parameter k, the roots, uh, closed, loop, uh, closed loop poles just march on the root locus so for any selection of parameter k you will only get closed loop poles on the original root locus now what happens if you need to design for closed loop poles that do not lie on the original root locus what do i mean by that so this is the root locus here like so for different values of k the parameter k the there will be roots on the root locus so these two roots this complex pair lies on the root locus for it so you can obtain this closed loop poles for some particular value of k but what if i want my closed loop poles to be here instead of here now these don't lie on the original root locus so no matter what value of k you choose you will never get to these closed loop poles so that is a problem so how do you achieve that the one way to achieve that is to alter the root locus and how do you alter the root locus by using dynamic controllers first controller dynamic control that we look at is proportional integral controller when i say dynamic controller you'll see that the transfer function of the controller will have some s uh, uh, factor in it as here it is kp times s plus ki divided by s so uh, for Proportional integral controller, uh, Ki, which is the integral gain divided by Kp, which is the proportional gain, is very much less than 1. A proportional controller typically doesn't change the shape of the root locus, but you'll use this uh, controller to uh, reduce steady state error. Um, this is how the Pi controller looks uh, in the pole 0 map. Uh, so you have the pole at 0 and the 0 very close to the pole at a location minus Ki divided by kp now as i said before um, pi controller proportional integral controller doesn't uh, affect the transient response much it just improves the steady state error in fact this for uh, type 0 systems systems of type 0 it uh, brings the steady state error to zero proportional derivative controller the controller transfer function is given by kd times s plus kp and essentially what you have is a single uh, zero so you will use a pd controller to get the desired transient response what i mean by that is you'll use the pd controller to get make the root locus go through your desired closed loop poles in the complex plane proportional integral derivative or pid controller is a combination of pi and pd so essentially what you do is multiply both the transfer functions and the controller is a combination of uh, these two here this is how the pid controller looks in the pole zero map now this is the pi part uh, there is a pole at zero and a zero at minus ki divided by kp2 and this is the pd part the zero is at minus kp1 divided by kd so the PID controller gives the desired transient response as well as it improves the steady state response. So essentially what you'll do is you'll use the PD part to make the root locus go through the desired complex pole location and then use PI controller to um, reduce the steady state error. So it's essentially a cascade of these two controllers. You'll design the PD controller first and then go on and design the PI controller. The next dynamic controller that we're going to look at is the lead controller. Lead controller uh, behaves in the same way as a PD controller. 
the sense that you'll use lead controller to bend the root locus and achieve transient uh, requirements. And the transfer function of this controller is given by Kc times S plus Cc divided by S plus Pc. Cc is the location of the zero, Pc is the location of the pole, and the Zc is closer to the imaginary axis as compared to the pole. This is how it looks on the pole zero plane. The next controller is the lag controller. Uh, this behaves uh, just like the PI controller and you'll use lag controller just to improve the steady state performance without uh, altering the root locus a whole lot. So essentially with the lag controller you're not going to affect uh, transient, uh, um, transient requirements. The transfer function almost looks the same like the lag controller but here the magnitude of ZC is greater than PC which means that PC is closer to the imaginary axis. Typically both PC and ZC are very close to the imaginary axis to not impact the original root locus. Uh, this is how it looks in the pole zero plane. Uh, PC is near to the imaginary axis. ZC is very close to PC. And finally we have the lead lag controller which is a combination of a lead controller and lag controller. So when you design a lead lag controller, you first satisfy transient requirements using the lead controller and then satisfy steady state error requirements using the lag controller. And this is how uh, the lead lag controller looks on the um, pole zero map in the complex plane. This is the lag part and this is the lead part of the controller.